So Alex, what do you do here at Khan Academy? Good question. I've done so many things. Generally, I work on making exercises and other parts of our content more interactive. That means the user can actually do something with them and they're not passively watching or passively reading. And, and what is that on a day-to-day -day basis? On a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it's fixing a lot of bugs. It's working on a lot of projects that um, sometimes test small changes and sometimes test really big changes. How do you test a small change? You tend to small change by uh, making it for some percentage of our users, but not all of them, and then seeing what changes in metrics result. Also, we ask questions are you to our users these days, like, hey, did you actually get something out of Khan Academy today? And that really helps us answer that question as well. See, so you make like a small change, and if people say are more likely to say that helped them, or if they're more likely to spend more time learning, or whatever it might be. Yeah. That's all the, 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 the types. Of, uh, what are you working on right now? Uh, right now, I'm working on some changes to the video page, actually all tutorial pages. Uh, I'm bringing back the practice button that we used to have, which said, hey, this is a video. How about you actually practice this concept, um, which is fun. And that should get a lot more people to click on exercises and land on videos. Um, another one is just changing our layout to be more YouTube-ish and seeing how that affects us. Because one of the results of user research was that a lot of people are very familiar with YouTube as a layout and anything we can do to be more like that and less our own special thing, the better for familiarity. And what were you doing before you came here? Uh, before I came here, immediately before this, I was working at a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing startup uh, called Get Around. And the whole idea there was if you had a car and you didn't want to, well, you wanted to make some money off of it when you weren't using it, which is you know 90% of the time, if not more. Um, you could rent it out to other people. And we would take care of the insurance, we would take care of finding people who wanted to rent your car. And yeah, that worked pretty well. These days, uh, they pivoted to uh, making it so you pretty much have to put your car within the get around system if you're gonna do it, and then also schedule your own time on it separately. So that makes it a lot easier for other people to get it instantly. You have to schedule time on your own car. Yeah. I see that makes sense. That makes it easier to, to utilize. And what other, I mean, I, I, I distinctly remember even when like you were interviewing, I mean, you were also a skilled fighter. Yes, um, I noticed that you're interviewing me by yourself this time. You don't have Sean to do as backup. That's right. How Sean is a black belt, so I felt very safe with him around. How do you feel now? I feel comfortable. Okay. You are wearing somewhat camouflaged army pants, which makes you. But yes. Yeah. Kind of a ninja shirt, but yes. Uh, it's it's fun. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a wonderful contrast. I think I remember telling you about this to taking taekwondo and then taking something which is much more of a combat and quickly resolve conflict sort of thing. Quickly resolve conflict by winning. <laughs> yes, or, or, or by getting out. Yeah. So what was that? What, what was it, what's this other non-Taekwondo thing? Krav Maga. And so you're, you are like a Krav Maga person, skilled person? Um, it's not something I've done in some time. I was focusing more on weightlifting recently. I see. Uh, so, but, but it's a wonderful compliment to that actually. It really gets your blood pumping and exhausts you in terms of cardio. I remember when we interviewed you, like, like it was myself and Shantanu in the room, mm -hmm. and when we learned about this, I asked you, do you think you could take both of us? And you didn't even think about it. You s <laughs> that, that was very impressive. <laughs> you seemed very confident. It's, it's a good thing to be, confidence. <laughs> <laughs> so so wh what, what made you come to Khan Academy? So... It was after I had been at the car sharing company for a while, realizing that, hey, this is, this is a good problem and I really hope that somebody solves it. It doesn't have to be me. So then it was very much like, okay, looking at all the space of possible problems and um, at the companies that are tending to be solutions to that, where do I actually want to go? So Khan Academy was the place where uh, of all the education, all the tech places I've seen, and I like looked around all of them basically, uh, was the one that seemed most willing to be uh, to attack the problem from the, low, the lowest level possible, to look at the building blocks of what education is, to look at them, discard parts that didn't work, to build upon other parts that seem to be working better, um, and uh, to really innovate at the core of it instead of just taking existing things and putting them online like so many other companies are doing, which is great and useful, but it's also not the place I wanted to be at. And, and you know, since you joined, kind of, what's the experience been like? What's maybe surprised you? Uh, 
Can you give me a little bit more of a prompt than that? <laughs> yeah, no, just like, I mean, just to describe kind of what it's been like the last, you know, uh, it's, it's been uh, what, uh, over? It was two years. Two years? Yes, uh, two, two years, years ago. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good question. Um, What's it like to work here? So, assuming you've done several of these interviews, you probably hear that one of the top reasons is the people. Yeah. And that was one of the main thought processes for coming here, uh, was I was really motivated to try to find a group of people who are equally motivated to work on stuff and very good at what they do. And I found that, and that's been by far one of the best things, because uh, working with people who actually know what they're doing and care about what they're doing is wonderful. And I was definitely missing some of that, I guess, in general throughout life until I got here. So. Sorry about you just, that. Your crop maga got on the camp. <laughs> 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 so that was a good thing. Um, but there was also something I guess I was expecting, um, and I would have been disappointed if I hadn't found here. Um, surprised. It was interesting to realize how, um, how Khan Academy differs from being a normal tech company in the sense that there is basically half the company devoted to all sorts of other things. So not product, but um, I guess product market fit related things, um, partnership sort of things, outreach, internationalization, all sorts of things that require very different skill sets from uh, designer, developer, product manager, content creator. Um, and so that was interesting. And it's also been interesting to uh, talk to these people, try to understand what they do more, and also understand what experiences they're having. Uh, one of the things I'm sure you have heard enough about by this point, but um, has been that experience working on the different sides of the house has been actually fairly different over the last year or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. And you know, a classic any for-profit company, they would just say, okay, whether it's on the product side or on the programmatic side, you're like, okay, where where are we going to find revenue? While our charter, our mission is actually maybe to actually target the places where there aren't revenue because that's where pe the people aren't being served, whether it's a developing country or whether it's the inner city or someplace. So yeah, there's a lot of programmatic work on how do we make sure we reach those folks who. Mm -hmm. Frankly, you know, the, the market is failing in, in, in a lot of ways. And that's a very hard question. That it is, is a very hard question. <laughs> it is literally like the product market fit, trying to find out across multiple markets with a product that is evolving. And uh, yeah, you can only pull it in so many di directions at once. Yeah. So you can't make it try to fit everything. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, and w what's, you know, what advice would you give to someone, you know, in middle school or high school who kind of wants to do what you do? Um, one of the wonderful things about the internet today and all the stuff that's out there, you don't have to wait until you're me or as old as I am, the ripe old age of 25. <laughs> as old as you <laughs> are. To be doing what I'm doing um, or to be doing all sorts of other interesting but just related things. Um, the simple answer is just go out and do stuff. Um, if you want a little bit more direction than that, um, find some way to get some mentorship uh, in terms of uh, in coding, since that's my main specialty. Uh, and there's ways to find that in open source projects, so there's ways to find that in dedicated programs that exist, especially around here in the Bay Area. Um, but you really kind of want to get over that initial hump where you can be, uh, you can feel confident in your productivity and that there's something that you don't know how to do, but you'll, you'll learn it and you'll get there. Um, and that's, uh, that's one of the useful forms of confidence to have because it lets you be like, okay, I can choose any of these equally challenging and daunting tasks and know that I will make a lot of progress on them and very likely completely succeed. Um, instead of being like, oh, I don't know how to do that, and then shrink away from that in fear, which is bad. Um, so that's really the most of it. You want to get to that place where you have that confidence, uh, and there is an initial bit of work to become good enough so that you have that confidence in yourself. And you want to try to get over that as fast as you can. But really just go out there and start making stuff. and. Yeah. In a somewhat fearless fashion, you know, go make make mistakes. <laughs> it's never been easier, frankly. Um, mm -hmm. You can make things that affect real people. You can make apps if you want. Um, you can make games. Uh, you will learn a lot if you make games, uh, especially like all the graphics stuff. That's so fun. So oh yeah, especially now. But that's yeah, things. that's how I started too. Yeah, um, it, it was just fascinating, and frankly, uh, even to this day, making pretty things appear on screen is a wonderful motivator. Yeah, <laughs> really. So, so what are you excited about right now? Um, as regards to Khan Academy's future, or just? Oh, I guess, or anything, but yeah. But OK, so let me answer the question of <laughs> KA specific reference frame first. <laughs> so uh, what I'm excited right now about is after kind of going through a series of existential threats, essentially, you could say 
okay, we need missions to combat um, product not feeling engaging enough, or um, uh, there was another one, uh, just like the whole organization into tutorials was another thing. Um, and now it seems to be, okay, let's put the content front and center and make more of it and be good at that, which was always my suspicion as to how do you make Khan Academy win in the sense that win is deliver the most value to the most people. Uh, so I'm really excited for that in general, um, specifics about just making more content in more areas and trying to be more deliberate in how you, both how you create that, what granularity you create that, how you package that up. Um, all of that has needed some thought for some time now. Um, and I find it awesome that we're actually tackling that now. So on a work-related thing, that's what I'm excited about. Um, in, other in other news, um, it's really always interesting to kind of like keep uh, abreast of trends and what's going on. Like I'm sure living here in the Bay Area, um, it's super obvious that, oh hey, you know, like the maker movement is something that has is very solid right now and you've been able to track it over like the last five, 10 years and see how it went from just like a tech shop here and a tech shop there to 3D printing everywhere. Um, you can uh, look at, well I guess you call them drones, but quadcopters was used to be the main thing that you would get. Um, Rise of consumer VR, that's fascinating, frankly. And Virtual reality. Yes, yes. yes. Um, on a actually affordable and you can do something with yeah. the level. And having tried it, the, the main thing there is a sense of presence that you are mm -hmm. actually transported somewhere else. That's powerful. Yeah. And uh, for people who haven't experienced it, it's a very, very interesting feeling. Like you put on and you're like, I'm not in this office, I'm, where am I? <laughs> uh, and that's powerful. Yeah. And there's a whole set of things that are, you know, need to be tried there, need to be tested, and an entire world of discovery, essentially. Um, sometimes, it, like, people might say, like, oh, man, it was super easy to, like, make stuff in the App Store when that was a small place. Well, if you're looking for small places that are going to see lots of growth, I would say VR is one of those places. Um, and, yeah, and this kind of ties back to the advice about, like, what do I, what do I say to kids who want to do cool stuff? Um, it helps to be in like one of these inflection points when something is like gathering steam and going to become big, um, but also like don't just do that just because that's going to happen. Um, do it because you want to, mm -hmm. um, and it's really easy to be like, oh well, you know, I'm going to do this or this because I think it can make me lots of money. Yeah. Um, but if you don't have the motivation for it, um, you're going to quit long before somebody else does. Yeah. No, that's very good advice. Well, thank you for being part of this crazy adventure. Thank you.